Hey guys, I just wanted to show you how you take apart the direct drive on the Anycubic Cobra, the normal one. And I wanted to show you how to change the inner tube, because there's a uh, PTFE tube on the inside of the Cobra. And this is the one that was on the inside of mine. And you can see it's badly damaged and broken. So I want to try and replace it with a Capricorn version and see if that maybe holds better in the printer. So I took a piece of Capricorn tubing and I made it the same size. So to take apart the direct drive on the Anycubic Cobra you need your set of these that came with the printer. And you probably need these too because somehow they managed to not make the same size bolts everywhere on this printer so you'll need a couple of tools for this so there's a screw on the side here of the direct drive housing which you need to take out and you just unscrew it here and of course you need to just heat up and get your filament out also, which I haven't done yet. So I'll just do that while I show you where the next screw is. So I'm going to put them here so I know where they are. Now the next screw is a bit tricky. It's on the other side of the printing house. It's over here inside. This is the worst one to get in and out. So it sits right in this one. They should have made it go in this side instead, but they didn't. So I'm just going to say filament remove. And then I'm going to loosen this one um, in the back. There, and you just take this right off. It just slides out like that. And then you carefully need to take this screw out so it doesn't disappear. There we go. So you see these are two different size bolts. Different size screws and different looking. But now they are out. I'm just going to wait for the filament to heat up so I can take that out. And now we're ready to remove the filament. So we just take this one out here and just, it's just, you pull this tab and then you can take it out. There we go. Just going to snip the end so I don't have to do that the next time. Put it back up on the roll out of the way and now I am going to shut the printer down again because we don't need it hot right now there we go so the next part you need to do is you need to remove the fan here which you can't probably see but I can turn the printer around a bit there you go there's a fan here that needs taking off and I might just turn this a little bit more so you can see what I am doing. Because everything I'm doing is on this side now. So just turn it all the way around. You should be able to see it now. There we go. So with your tools here, you have one screw on top and one on the bottom. So you just unscrew these. And this one. And the fan comes right off. And remember when you have it out, just to clean off all the dust you can. And this we're just going to set aside over here. There we go. Now, to get to this screw in here, we need to first loosen this one up. This is the, the calibration thing that uh, makes uh, the leveling easy. And this one has a screw on top. 
and we need the smaller one because they made that another size also so in with the small one and you just i find it easier to take this off by just pushing this one up there's a, f a feather what you call it a spring in here and you just do this to get it out it can be a bit tricky to feel when it's loose or not there we go so this is this screw and this one just slides down and off and then you have your spring here which i'm going to put back on the bolt it belongs to but yeah this is just a uh, your like your BL touch kind of thing on the Cobra for the auto leveling but now we have that out of the way and then we can get to the part where the hot end actually is inside so we loosen this screw inside here there's three of these one is shorter than the other two I'm just going to keep taking this one out. These are very long screws, so patience is a virtue. And there we go. This is the first. The three here. And we loosen this one up also. You could avoid to take this part off if you want but i like to see what's going on inside the the direct drive so i'm taking it all apart or at least until we get to the hot end there we go so those three are out now and you can just there's a magnet in here holding this one in place so you can just pop this out and then you have access to your hot end here so this is the hot end sitting right here and the filament goes in through these gears in the direct drive and you have a PTFE tube sitting on top of here where the filament goes in and it feeds the gears in here and then there we go and yeah we know how this works and then the filament comes in here is fed through another PTFE tube and into the hot end so I just take this here off and since my hot end is hot right now I need to be careful but you see my hot end is leaking so I'm waiting for a replacement and this is why I know how to take this direct drive apart because I've done it a couple of times to try and save this hot end and nothing is working so I am waiting for my replacement but yeah on this uh, heater thing, you can see we have two little screws and you need to unscrew these to get access to the rest of the hot end. And of course, that's the other one. There we go. And you just need to loosen them. You don't need to take them all the way out. So, like so. And it slides right off. This is just a heat thing on the housing there. And you have this part which goes onto here and guides the filament inside the printer. So we just set these aside. And now you can see where the second PTFE tube is. I didn't think there was a second PTFE tube in this direct drive system, but there is. And that's why I'm taking it apart so people can see that there actually is one more inside the printer so now i want to change it to this capricorn version and hopefully that will help the prints a lot it already does print nicely when it doesn't leak all over so i'm just going to it's still hot now too hot so just going to see if i can pull this out with my fingers and of course i can't so I'm going to need to take my tool here and just 
get it onto the hot end so I just have a grip on it. So I don't burn myself. And then just pull that out. And you see there's a bit of filament in here. And this this is the replacement I put in a couple of days ago. But I still have a leak. And then there's the old one that somehow looks like it's been cut up here. And I don't know how that's happened other than maybe a, when it was made it was cut halfway and then still put in. I don't know. So now I'm taking the blue Capricorn tube and I'm going to put that in the hot end. Like so. And of course I've cut it at a 90 degree angle or a straight angle. I'm going to make sure it's pushed all the way into the bottom of this so it's resting on the nozzle. There we go. <clears throat> and now we just need to assemble the whole thing again. And if you didn't have a leaky hot end, then you would be good to go. But uh, I still need my replacement from the Anycubic factory, and I'm waiting for that. So now we do everything in reverse. We take this and this bit here, and we slide it down on over this, and here also. And then you tighten the screws without fully tightening them. Because we're going to twist and turn the hot end in a second. When it's going on to the direct drive again so we need it to be able to move but still hold on to it there we go and then you just take this and you sort of slide it back into here and it doesn't always just go in the way it should, but... It needs to. Just... Uh, second. There is a bit tricky to get on sometimes. You just need to push the things in. And then the shortest Everyone. screw goes into this place. As I said, this screw goes into this part, and then you have the other two longer ones, which goes into each their own hole here. And then just tighten those again. And it's a good idea just to keep this popped in until you have at least one screw that's holding it a bit tight. You can loosen up or jump out again really really easily and then you have to start fiddling with it again and then this one and then we just need to make sure the hot end is sitting in the correct position and then we need to tighten those two also There we go. And then just make sure the hot end is in the right position. And that's a bit too far. There we go. Tighten that up. And then I'm going to put on the plastic socket thing again. There we go on with you. And then this sensor thing goes back onto just by sliding in from upside down and now you need to take the spring here and put it inside here. It just sort of pops in and you take the screw and make sure it goes through the spring and then 
you do the opposite and you take this and you just fasten it again and don't fasten it all the way still needs to be a bit loose because this depends on how far you need to set your uh, C offset when you are done auto leveling you need to reorient it with the set the set or the C offset whichever you prefer now that's in place now we need to put the fan back on and we just take this and just slide it up here put in the screws And there we go. It gets easier when you've done this a couple of times. And you get used to what needs to be done. What the beep? That's the wrong one. Wow. There we go. Now I don't tighten it all the way until I have the other one in. There we go. In with ya. There we go. And now we all we have left is actually putting the housing back on. And this is the most challenging one. So I take the screw and set it on this. And I... Put this wire down in here and I just try and see if I can gently guide it and it's not easy they didn't make this part very easy so the wiring inside you just need to pull down on and put in the screw into this hole there and then you can take your housing and just need to just sort of slide it onto there and get this into the slot over there and just tighten this one up this is the worst placing of the screw that i've had on the printer so far it's really really irritating Because you can't really see anything of what you're doing, you just have to feel your way. I hope you hit the right spot. There we go. And now I just need to twist the printer around and get the last screw in on the side of the housing over here. And that's the other wrench thingy. Here in Denmark we call it an ombraco, but I don't know what it's called everywhere else. And there we go. And now, when you've done this, you need to auto-level the printer again and have it do the C of Z because it's different every time you take this one off and put it on again. This is just basically measuring the distance between this end and the yeah, the hot what do you call this? The sheet here on your printer. You know what I mean. I can't find my words today. So yeah, this is basically it. So we just need to Make sure your leveling is all right, and I hope this little trick helps you all out. I will see you another time. Bye-bye.